This Hilux is electrified and it uses less fuel than the other versions, but it isn't a hybrid Hilux, not in Toyota land. This is the V-Active 48 volt mild hybrid Hilux. This one here in particular is the Rogue version. There's a few different variants available with this new engine tech. I'm gonna tell you about them in this review and tell you whether it's worth your money. Make sure you stay tuned and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Let's get to it. It's worth noting that not all versions of the Hilux have scored the 48 volt mild hybrid technology. Uh, the entry level workmates of this world still don't get it and they still look the same as they always did. But the versions with the 48 volt mild hybrid system, including the SR, SR5 and the Rogue, they do get a slightly different look at the front. And I think that's like the fourth facelift for this model range. Um, I mean, it's been around since what, 2015. so. It's not new, but at least it looks a little bit fresher now. And it does add a few extra features as well, like the SR grade, it's available with a cab chassis or a pickup body style. And it adds features that you might really appreciate that it didn't have before. Things like keyless entry and push button start. There's also now a dual zone climate control system in that model, which does add some niceness to the situation, although it still gets rubber floors and cloth seats. So um, it is still more of a work focused vehicle and then up from there is the SR5 which adds things that you will appreciate gets different wheels gets a different look with darkened headlight surrounds and gloss black finishes on the outside and it also gets the cloth seat trim but with carpet flooring you also get a wireless phone charger in that spec as well as USB-C ports in the back and there's also rear air vents in that grade as well so that might be a nice step up if you are considering the SR go to the SR5 and if you want even more premiumness in your SR5 there is a premium interior package two and a half grand and it'll get you leather seat trim on the inside electric driver's seat adjustment and heated front seats as well. And at the top of the 48 volt mild hybrid range is this one here, the Rogue, which does have a different exterior look as you can tell for yourself. Um, it's got the wide body arch flares. It's also got a wider track uh, for better controllability and stability, I guess. And there's also rear disc brakes for this model, which you don't get on the other versions below it. Get the sailplane at the back. You also get the electric roller cover carpet lining in the tub, which is different and there's also a leather seat trim interior heated front seats electric driver's seat adjustment and a different stereo system with JBL speakers too now let's talk about some alternatives to the Hilux because there's some good ones Look, there are no other mild hybrid utes out there on the market right now, but I don't think that really matters because, well, there's some other really, really good utes out there that maybe might be more livable on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, I know they will. I've lived with a few of them in the past and find them much more enjoyable than this. And the first option is the Ford Ranger. Um, you might say, oh yeah, you always say that because, well, I do, it's really good. It's got a choice of a bi-turbo four-cylinder, two-liter engine or a V6 diesel as well. It's really, really nice. Uh, it's very livable on a day-to-day -day basis, good payload capacity, heaps of tech, and relatively decent pricing as well. Second option, Volkswagen Amarok. It's basically a different take on the Ranger, but with a heap of different changes that have been made to make it more, well, Volkswagen-y. It steers differently, it rides differently, but also I've just driven a lift kit version, so you can get a 40 mil lift kit from ARB through Volkswagen, and it's really, really good. Make sure you check out my reviews in the link below. Um, there's a full list of different options for you in the description. And finally, if you are thinking, well, I'm ready to go full hybrid, I don't care if it's petrol or diesel, go and check out the GWM Canon Alpha Hybrid. It is really amazing value for money. It's a petrol electric hybrid. It's got a really likable powertrain. There are some elements to it, which like this car, maybe aren't as likable, but it does seem to stack up amazingly well on the value for money front. So which of those would you pick or something different? Let me know in the comments. Can you tell it's the mild hybrid version when you look at it? Well, I can't, not really, um, but there are some visual changes to the other versions of the Hilux that do run the new 48 volt powertrain. Um, look, this one is the Rogue, so it gets the more uh, butch looking body kit, and that's obviously uh, including those wheel arch flares, and it does have a wider track than the other versions of the Hilux, so there is a reason for it. It's also got different wheels, and it's also got sidestep standard and rear 
disc brake standard. You get a rogue sailplane at the back and you also get a roller cargo cover which is electric which is actually pretty handy um, i reckon that it could be a really nice thing for you to have if you well don't like the big noisy slidey thing with the manual one and yes this is the rogue um, it gets the supported tailgate drop which is nice it also gets carpet lining on the inside and obviously you might think well that's useless for a ute but thankfully you can remove it if you want to just velcro it into place um, and it might not necessarily be the ideal thing for tradies for instance but if you're moving furniture or something it could be really handy now i'm going to put some figures on your screen the payload figures for this version and also the other versions with the 48 volt powertrain and you really really need to keep in mind that even though this ute does have maximum brake towing capacity of three and a half tons yes this one does have a tow bar um, it does well have a limited gross combination mass so if you were to put the maximum tow ball download on that tow bar you'd only be left with a couple hundred kilos of payload including the occupants so yeah you really need to do your maths with the gcm and the limitations with the hilux because some of the other utes out there have much much better gross combination mass figures um, but look lots of other utes in this segment do lots of other things better than the hilux does in my opinion at least it does have a full-size spare wheel underneath there as well if you need it all right let's go have a look inside shall we Maybe we should play a game of spot the difference. Can you really see anything that's changed in here compared to some of the other models that have come before this Hilux? Well, I mean, not really. It is still a very, um, let's say, traditional cabin design. You've still got these uh, analog dials and there is a digital instrument part to that cluster, as you can see there. Um, and it does give you a bit of information that you might wanna keep an eye on your fuel consumption. And also uh, you can have a look at what's happening with that mild hybrid system. And uh, yeah, you can adjust things about the mild hybrid system as well. And yes, there is a tire direction uh, info screen as well. So look, there is some info there that's handy, um, but it's not nearly as high tech as some of the other vehicles in this class. And that can also be said for these controls here. But hey, look at this. You now get dual zone climate control. It was always single zone previously, but annoyingly, it's still just on or off for your seat heating. And um, I always get confused <laughs> when I'm thinking about which one's left and which one's right. Maybe I'm just silly, but uh, there's now a wireless phone charger though. Um, yes, that's where your four wheel drive uh, controls are. And there's more controls here for off-road stuff, uh, mode selector and drive modes as well. Um, and this MTS button, which is for your off-road terrain management system. So we'll test that out shortly. Uh, yep, pretty conventional. Otherwise you've still got a little storage pocket here cup holder up here it's pretty limited for storage actually um, and that wireless phone charger does eat into some of that storage space and you do thankfully get uh, pop out cup holders on the sides of the dashboard which I know is a fan favorite with the tradies out there they probably also hate these little JBL speaker pods that sort of just look like they've been tacked on badly and speaking of um not as impressive as it could be uh, this eight inch touchscreen media system it's a carryover from the models that have gone before it and look i'm sure it's fine to live with uh, i have lived with one for a while before and i think that it is manageable and it's got apple carplay and android auto and that sort of stuff it's just very very basic and well doesn't really offer anything that's too exciting to play with so um, I don't think that really matters if you're the sort of person who like me usually just has Apple CarPlay connected straight away but there is sat nav if that's something that you want to investigate um, and look I think that if you're going off-road maybe that'll be handy for you uh, but look it's just not amazing in here it's just not a very special experience considering the money that's being asked look you sort of get some nice finishes up here there's ambient lights in the doors as well and you've still got this twin glove box which is actually pretty handy although i've always said that that looks so sharp i wouldn't want to go knee first head first arm first into that and speaking of um hard edged bits yes you still get the very very hard placed grab handles on the sides which could be a bit of an issue. Um, also up here, you've got 
an SOS button. So it's got connected services, this vehicle. So it means that if you are in an accident uh, and you need to get emergency services on site, you can just press the button and it will call them for you, which is pretty handy. Up here, there's also obviously a little um, sunglasses holder. No <laughs> vanity mirrors on the sun visors, despite the fact that so many others do, including the passenger side gets one. So obviously you mustn't uh, have to show up to the work site looking your best if you show up in a Hilux. All right, let's check out the backseat space, shall we? Yes, there are ISOFIX points, and you can see I've got my kiddo's seat in there. But unlike some of the other utes out there, you still have to do the top tether thing to this center point behind this middle headrest, and that is a little bit annoying. Um, most other utes now have a top tether point behind the seat itself. All right, let's jump in and have a look at the space. And as you can probably tell, it's... um. It's tight, uh, I'm 182 centimeters or six foot. I don't have very much foot room. My knees are brushing up against the seat that's set in my driving position. So yeah, keep that in mind. Also, you could bump your head on that if you're off-roading and you're a backseat passenger. So um, yeah, hold on tight is my advice. Now, it is a pretty tight space. In fact, um, yeah, you're not gonna fit three adults in here as comfortably as you would in some of the other utes out there. And there is a bit of a transmission tunnel intrusion to contend with, not much though. USB-C ports in the back now, which is good. Got a couple of directional air vents, which is also good. And map pockets on both seat packs with a little flip down bag hook as well. So look, it's not all bad, but hey, um, I reckon it could be better when it comes to the backseat experience. For the most part, it's a pretty familiar story under the bonnet of the mild hybrid Hilux because it's still got a 2.8 litre four cylinder turbo diesel engine with the same power and torque outputs as before, still with a six speed auto as standard and still with selectable four wheel drive too and diesel particulate filter. Whether that's good or bad, you'll make up your own mind. Now, it does have obviously a different element to this powertrain. It's got a 48 volt mild hybrid system, which basically replaces the alternator with a belt driven motor. And it does uh, add some extra punch when you need it at lower speeds in particular. Also allows the car to run its 12 volt accessories off that. Speaking of which, there is no space for a second 12 volt battery under the bonnet anymore because there's now a fuse box in the way. So for off-roaders, that might be a little bit frustrating. And also that hybrid system with a lithium ion battery pack is designed to take a little bit of the load off when it comes to stop start traffic and it'll kick the engine on or off depending on whether it thinks it's possible to do so. You can actually have a standard or extended start stop system active. Um, and if you wanna save as much fuel as you possibly can, you'll choose the extended one, but it is, well, a little bit rudimentary in some ways when it comes to restarting. I'll tell you about that in a sec. So, as I mentioned, three and a half ton towing as well, but you have to keep in mind those limitations when it comes to the gross combination mass. Right, let's go for a drive and see what it's like, shall we? If you spend a lot of time sitting in stop-start traffic, well, the hybridized version of the Hilux could be music to your ears, or better yet, silence to your ears because this is a pretty gruff engine at idle um, it's got a fair bit of vibration to it as well so this engine start stop system as part of this 48 volt mild hybrid system look i'll show you now i'll just come up to a stop here and put my foot on the brake hard and it turns the engine off and i've got it on extended mode so that it will stay off as long as possible to help me save as much fuel as possible i'm going to tell you about the efficiency stuff shortly um, but let's just imagine that the light's gone green and take off here and that's actually fairly smooth, I would say. Um, I did have a couple of instances where I've been driving this car over the past few days where it actually felt more like I was being shaken awake from a dream. Um, so it does depend on the situation that you're in uh, because this is a pretty gruff engine. I think that's what exaggerates um, the roughness of the restart at times. But for the most part, it is relatively smooth. Um, and it's also thankfully adding just a little bit more pep to low speed situations when you are driving. So that system can actually give you a little tiny boost despite the fact that there is no improvement to the combined power and torque figures. It does have 
a little bit of noticeable impact. And look, you put your foot down, there's less lag to contend with. It's more immediate in its responsiveness, and it does make for a more enjoyable drive experience because of that. Like this diesel engine, I always thought has been a pretty good thing in terms of power and torque. It's never really felt like it's been underdone, but it does have a slightly more refined and more punchy and just effortlessness edge to the drive experience now. And speaking of the edge to the drive experience, the thing that I just cannot ignore and really cannot come to terms with in this generation of Hilux is the harshness of the suspension. It is agricultural at times. And obviously, look, it's designed to be a work vehicle. I know that, but how come a Ford Ranger can uh, deal with more payload capacity and yet be far, far more livable on a daily basis when it comes to ride comfort. I just can't get my head around that. This just has, um, honestly, it's a somewhat punishing ride because it picks up so much of what's happening on the road surface and transmits it back into the cabin. And on-road driving, you don't really want that. Off-road is a different story, obviously, and we'll get to that. There's one more thing that I have always been a bit of a fan of in the Hilux, and that's its hydraulic steering system. It does have a bit more feel and a bit more, well, heftiness to it in corners, um, but it's not too heavy. Um, it's pretty easy to maneuver this thing at lower speeds and higher speeds as well. And obviously, these aren't necessarily the grippiest tires. It's more of a, a mixed terrain style tire than, um, you know, what you might find on uh, the high-spec Amarok uh, Aventura, for instance. Um, but look, it's a pretty enjoyable drive experience um, if you can get over the fact that the ride is just a bit too unpleasant, uh, in my opinion. And look, I know this is my YouTube channel, but my almost three-year-old daughter sometimes gives me her thoughts on cars. And when I put her back into this Hilux yesterday, she goes to me, oh, I go in the bumpy truck. Yeah, so that gives you an idea that if a three-year-old in a child seat can pick up on the bump factor, it's pretty bumpy. And look, to be honest, I haven't filled up the tray with any weight or anything. It does have a limited payload, this model, but um, yeah, I've driven it with weight in the back in the past, and it's still pretty uncomfortable. And when you're towing, it's not nearly as settled as some of the other utes out there when it comes to the rear suspension either. So all of those things might play into your considerations, but I know that it's a good thing off-road, but I'm gonna show you how it is off-road and I wanna test out some of these new drive mode things as well. Let's do that. So we're in four wheel drive high range. I've got the multi-terrain select button activated and there are a few different modes you can choose just by twirling the dial above. Uh, there's deep snow, mud, sand, dirt and auto. Um, I'm just about to go through a bit of a mud patch so we'll put it in mud and let the system do its own thing. Now what it's designed to do is make your traction and progress just a little bit less concerning than it otherwise might have been and just tunes the traction control and throttle response and all that sort of stuff to be well designed for the situation you're in and through this boggy looking little mud patch a bit of a splash factor there but through that easily and we'll continue on to the next obstacle which i think will again be a bit of mud because it's been pretty muddy and rainy up where i am and Yes, uh, I'm not going to be doing a seriously, ridiculously off-road hardcore test here, just to give you an idea of the fact that you've got a few different modes to play with, and they will come into their own in different situations. So, we'll go over this next mud patch. So I got through that pretty deep little uh, mud hole back there and there was a bit of a drop off that I wasn't probably expecting. It wasn't there last time I came through, but uh, it got through fine. And like I said, this isn't gonna be an exhaustive off-road test. I just wanted to see whether this MTS system actually makes a difference. And now I'm gonna put it into dirt because things have opened up a little bit and the terrain has changed. So. We'll continue along this track. There are a few little mud puddles along the way, but nothing too serious. Uh, and yeah, I think that 
this car still has the uh, credential that it always had off-road and in my opinion it's been one of the best utes that you can buy for off-road driving um, maybe not the most comfortable ute to live with on a daily basis but it does still have the off-road factor absolutely nailed in terms of the drivability and the feel that you get as well so i was very critical of the ride well maybe justifiably critical of the ride in uh, the on-road section of this review but in off-road situations you do find that uh, having that real feel for what's happening underneath the tires and also with that communicating back into your hands through the steering wheel it's really really reassuring and you do feel more confident in this vehicle than in some of the other utes out there that have say electric power steering systems or maybe squishier rides okay so just going through some rutted sections here and the one thing that the Hilux has always been good at is clearance it's got decent ground clearance and so I don't really have any fear of bellying out too badly over this stuff and yes the Rogue model does have a wider track so you have to keep that in mind but it's doing the clearance thing really really easily over that sort of terrain and we're through so we'll continue on now, I haven't touched the traction control button. I'm trusting that the MTS uh, knows what it's doing, and I'm sure it does. So we'll just continue on along up here. Oh, and now we've got some rocks. So let's go into rock mode. There isn't one. So what we have to do now is put it into low range. And then we've got rock, mud, or sand. So we'll go on rock. Low range, obviously, I've just been in high range up to this point. And yes, low range does mean that you've got, obviously, a completely different gearing factor to the transmission. And yep, cruising up along this bit quite easily, to be honest. Very pronounced shift. You don't have paddle shifters like some other utes do to take matters into your own hands, although there is a manual shift mode down on the gear selector here if you want to uh, but look, we'll just crawl up over these rocks easy does it easy does it and a little bit more crawling up here Really, the only clearance issue I'm finding is the tow bar, um, which is not unusual for a, a ute to feel like it's touching down at the back with the tow bar. And we've made it to our destination to say goodbye to this video. So, no mods to this vehicle. It's just stock standard as you would buy it off the showroom floor. Didn't lower the tyre pressures. And I am no off-roading expert. I've done a bit of it, obviously, but... Um, yeah, I think that the Hilux still is one of the best off the showroom floor four wheel drive utes that you can get. So is the electrified Hilux more fuel efficient? Well, on your screen, you'll see the official combined cycle figure for the V-Active models in the Hilux range. And that is an improvement over the existing non-electrified versions. Uh, and look, in my testing, uh, I have seen similar levels of improvement. Uh, it is not necessarily achievable, I don't think, or I haven't found to get that sort of on paper number, but you might be able to do it if you do a lot of urban and stop start driving. My driving was a mix across urban highway, freeway, and a bit of stop start as well. And I was still pretty impressed with that number. So yeah, there is an improvement and there's an improvement to the drive experience. So seems to stack up decently, this V-Active version of the Hilux. The Hilux range still comes with a five-star ANCAP safety rating, and that means that it gets stuff like autonomous emergency braking. There's also a lane departure warning system. There's blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert and a surround view camera on some grades. Um, but like I said, it is disappointing that the cab chassis models still don't come with an available reversing camera from the factory. You can get one fitted aftermarket, of course, and you might do that if you're opting for your own tray anyway. But 
it's just weird that they don't offer that tech in 2024. I mean, you get it on everything else, pretty much. Now, I reckon that it does stack up pretty well from the safety usability perspective. It's not annoying in any particular way, this car to drive. And there's also a decent amount of airbags fitted, dual front, driver's knee, front side, and full length curtain coverage as well. It's a Toyota, so it comes with a five year unlimited kilometer warranty. And if you maintain this vehicle on time, you don't need to service it with Toyota. Just make sure that you're getting your logbook stamped. Well, you are eligible to have seven years of powertrain warranty as well. So what about the battery pack? You'll see the details for its warranty on your screen now, but keep in mind, Toyota does still need servicing for this ute every six months and 10,000 kilometers, which is far less convenient than some of the other utes out there. And it might actually be a deal breaker for you if you do a lot of Ks. Um, it means that, yeah, you have to be back at the dealership or wherever you get your car serviced more regularly. And if you do go to Toyota, there is a cap price servicing plan for the first three years or 60,000 Ks. Um, it's not necessarily overly affordable when you consider it on a yearly basis when it comes to servicing costs. Um, so all of those things might play into your decision-making process. Or you might just go, it's a Toyota. I know what I'm getting and I'm happy to deal with it. Let me know what you think in the comments. So it's not a hybrid Hilux, but it is an improved one. I like this 48 volt system that they've added to this ute. It does improve things a little bit, make it a little bit more refined and a little bit more urban friendly in particular. So if you are looking at a Hilux and you are considering the V-Active version, I reckon it's definitely worth it. So would you choose it or would you choose one of the other utes I mentioned earlier on or something completely different? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you've had any problems with your Hilux, also let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.